Well, Jess, isn't this beautiful country up here? Is it ever? You know, it doesn't matter how much you hear about Canada. This is just a spectacular, spectacular part of the world. And we're here to do a prairie dog hunt. <laughs> and prairie dogs actually are, are commonly thought of as prairie dogs out here and by the folks in the east. What are they actually? They are Richardson ground squirrels. Exactly. <laughs> kind of a unique species of hunt. One of the great things about being here is that we're going to have an opportunity, father, daughter, to test their <laughs> shooting skills, test their hunting skills, maybe have some fun, meet some new friends. Show up the old man. Show up the old man as usual. <laughs> and, and, and be a part of this great hunting heritage that, that's so important to us as Canadians. Well, I have to tell you, it's just going to be a great hunt, and we're looking forward to sharing with you. I'm your host, Thomas Pigeon. And I am Jessica Pigeon. Let's get hunting. Dodge presents Canada in the Rough, the hunting adventure documentary series. Canada, the last hunting frontier, three and a half million square miles of unspoiled wilderness and some of the best hunting on the planet. Canada in the Rough, the hunting adventure documentary series, season six, is brought to you by Dodge, grab life by the horns, Rocky, outdoor gear, the Beretta family of firearms, federal premium ammunition, every shot counts, Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here, Yamaha, ATVs and outboards, and Pioneer Log Homes of BC, the finest log homes on earth. This week on Canada in the Rough, Thomas and his daughter Jessica are in Saskatchewan, helping a local rancher eliminate a crop-damaging rodent, the Richardson ground squirrel. Although small in stature, these miniature prairie dogs cause major havoc for many farmers. Their range covers much of the North American Great Plains and includes portions of Alberta and Manitoba, not to mention some American states also. Richardson ground squirrels are herbivores and cause significant financial losses to farmers who have big populations of these pests. They eat throughout the day on many types of crops and native grasses, but they are also known to even eat their own. Each female ground squirrel owns at least one burrow system that has two or three exits and two or five sleeping chambers. When populations grow, so does the damage they cause. Helping farmers get rid of these rodents is not only a good thing to do, but it's also a great way to introduce young people to hunting and even sharpen your own shooting skills. Stay tuned for a fun father and daughter hunt in southern Saskatchewan. So today we're going to sight in these guns. We're shooting Model 85 with 17 HMR uh, bullets right now. And uh, the 17 HMR round is a really light, flat shooting round. It's perfect for prairie dogs. This is sort of like a hunter's version of whack-a-mole, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. Anyways, but it's a light bullet. It's a real flat shooting bullet. The good news is flat shooting, so it really holds its trajectory at long distances. But because it's so light, guess what happens in the wind? <laughs> a little drift. So we're going to have to think about wind, wind drift, especially yeah. in the prairies. So we're sighting in here on a 100-yard target. We're going to start off with a traditional crosshair matrix target. And then we're going to have some real fun. We bought these new redhead targets. You know, they've got this great picture, actually, of a, of a varmint, of a prairie dog. And when you hit them, dig this one that goes green. <laughs> if you hit in the vitals. You ready to dial this thing in? Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay, pop your clip out. Let's put some ammunition in. There you go, Just Put three shells in there, if you would. be great. All right, just show us your stuff, baby. <laughs> and just shoot for dead center. 
page last year, but three quarters of an inch to an inch low and two inches to the right. So let's just make those adjustments and get that dialed in, okay? Okay. Yeah, at 800 yards, it should be about eight clicks. Oh yeah, dialed in. Good. All right. Nice shooting, kid. Thank you. Okay, so let's, uh, uh, knowing we're right on where you need to be, let's put a gopher target up and have some real fun practicing. All right, okay. let's Gotta do it. Gotta get some targets. Good shot. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. <laughs> okay, let's do that again. Do that again. You cut exactly the same hole. Unbelievable. What a great oh, shot. Right on. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. I think we're ready to go vermin hunting. Sounds good. Let's pack up the gear and let's get ready to get on that plane. <laughs> Coming up, the hunt begins in southern Saskatchewan. Listen to this part. Oh my God, it's unbelievable. Closed captioning is brought to you by Burris. See the light. Today, Thomas and Jessica are headed to the town of Rock Glen in southern Saskatchewan near the Montana border. With most of Saskatchewan known for its extremely flat lands, Rock Glen is truly something special. Located in the Wood Mountain Uplands area, it's rich with rolling hills, lush valleys mixed in with a little prairies. Today, we are here to hunt the crop-damaging Richardson ground squirrel, but this area is full of other wildlife, including whitetails, mule deer, and coyotes and at one time was home to hundreds of thousands of Plains Bison. Oh, isn't this pretty, Jess? Looks great. Right oh man, look at it. I think we've just arrived in God's country. <laughs> look at this, this is gorgeous. This is great. Warren. Hi, guys. <laughs> hey there. Warren, Good to meet how you. are you? Tom. Great to meet you. Meet my daughter, Jessica. Jessica. Nice, nice to meet, to you. meet you. <laughs> Jess nice and I have been planning this, this hunt for well, since the Safari Club dinner, yeah, yeah. That's where, good. where it was auctioned off, Warren was good enough to put up a hunt for prairie dogs on his property so we could come out and shoot some, shoot some critters and have some fun. And, and we're going to shoot some of those prairie dogs. They're actually a miniature prairie dog. Mini dogs? They're just, they're, they're a third the size. They're a Richardson ground squirrel. So you gotta be a better shot, that's all. <laughs> well, we'll get onto it, you know what? We only want good shots out here. So. <laughs> well, that's so, why we brought Jess, because right. I'm hopeless. <laughs> uh, when my dad bought this piece of land that we're on right now, it was approximately 1971, and I was a young, young guy helping him ranch, and I always looked into the native land and said, I wanna have a house in them hills where you can't see anything but native land. And I, with my desire to hunt and you know the interest in tourism, about five years ago, I started building a cabin, and. Everything modern inside, we can sleep, at least 16 people. It's handicap accessible. The doors are all able to get a wheelchair through in the shower and the bathroom. We've got a fully equipped kitchen and all the utensils and cooking stuff you need that if you want to just be here by yourself, bring your own food and do your own cooking, we, we allow that. It's not roughing it by any means. It's a cabin, but it's still, still pretty modern inside. I've got a lot of acres uh, that these gophers are a problem on, and last year alone on 320 acres, I shot over 20,000 rounds. Now, 
If you see somewhere where there's five or six holes on a field, it doesn't look like that much devastation. But when you get the numbers that some of us have in places, it's embarrassing and it devalues your land so bad that it's not understood even by other agriculture people that don't have them. You'll see some of the devastation these animals are doing and how an animal that's valuable to us ranchers could break a leg and have to be put down because it's stepped in some of these holes and plus they take away whatever's growing on the land. They can eat it right to the bare dirt. So that's why I've started getting as many people out here as I can to take some shots at them and I have seen a little difference on part of my land where we've been doing some shooting and uh, because I like shooting, it's something that I don't mind taking time off to take guys out and do a little bit of hunting on them. This is go for Haven. Yep. It's gonna be we'll wicked. Shoot off this high spot right here. That's like a great spot. Send a bench up. You're right, eh? when you get on this side of the hill, boy, I tell you what, the light just brightens yep. everything up. And yep. You start running left and right. This looks like Caddyshack. <laughs> yeah. Let's get, let's get some firepower and set up. Yeah, she got one. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is wicked. Good shot, Jess. That one. Hey, can I play too? No. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you on the scope? Way over there now. Yes, there I see. Right there. There she is. Hello. Perfect. There's another one sitting right there. Too. Oh, yeah? Oh, okay. There you go. Bam! <laughs> See that one sitting way up out there on the hillside? Okay, there's one. Good. <laughs> this is where it gets above and to the left. Oh, there he is. Okay. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! A little graphic, okay. <laughs> Take one each. Who's taking left, right? Oh, Who's on the switch? Good stuff, Jess. And I'm empty. <laughs> You're empty? And that was our first night with our new friend Warren. And I believe I won. <laughs> Doing a little road shooting and you outshot Papa by about three to one tonight, I think. Good job. Coming up, more great hunting on day two. Look at this one straight out here, Jess. Just to the left of him now, there's another one. Give it to me. Boy, you know, driving in here this morning, Warren, it's just amazing seeing the devastation that these things do, right? Yeah, this was hayfield at one time. It's impossible to run machinery over it now. Even horseback, I would hesitate to ride hard across that yeah, for the fact of breaking really a leg. Your way through. Yeah. It, it just looks like a minefield when you come up on that far side here, too, of course. <laughs> oh, and it is a minefield. Well, we're getting our revenge on them right now. <laughs> Jessica's putting the hurt on them, and she's got oh, some yeah. more to shoot. Look at this one straight out here, Jess. They're kind of wrestling there. Good one. Take the one to the just to the left of him now. There's another one. That's one Good shot, Jess. Thanks, Good Rick. stuff. <laughs> oh, there's one right on this mountain right and here. The one right the three tufts of grass. Oh, hi. Yep. Give it to him. Woo! <laughs> Good shot. Oh man. <laughs> well, 17 HMRs do the job, that's for sure. <laughs> do they ever? Run. You got a runner. See him standing up. See him land right there, right there. Yeah. See the one 
Mount Stanton straight over there. Whoa! Woo -hoo -hoo. A little bit back to the right. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Dead on. Oh, yeah. Hey, did you see that one there, Jess? Can you, do we have that new one? Okay, I think I see it. Okay, go for him, Jess. I'll cover. Keep your eye on him. Oh, there's you have? It's a little bit to the right. Oh, I see him. <laughs> All right. Oh, man, Dad, if my friends knew how much fun this was, they would instantly go out and get their licenses. You're, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Coming up, Thomas and Jess head out on foot and we learn a little more about Rockland. I was born in Rockland, and uh, I'm on the ranch where my grandparents started it. My father took over from them, and I've since took over from him. And we're in some unique land as far as Saskatchewan goes. It's not flat, as a lot of people believe all of Saskatchewan to be. It was uh, great hunting grounds for the natives when they came up here, and Sitting Bull was about 25 miles west of us when he made his retreat into Saskatchewan he came up here and he hunted these same hills and uh, I often ride up on a hill or, or following cows and they're on the native land and I like to think that I may be chasing 200 animals when there used to be herds of 200,000 buffalo coming over these hills and when they went by it was black ground after the native grass was pounded to nothing and we don't see that anymore but when you get in these hills around here and look past the fences or any of the marks that the European settlers have left, you can still imagine what it was like when the natives uh, were chasing the buffalo around. This is a very different day today, but for everything I'm seeing, they're sitting in that little corner. So I think what we'll do is get off these bench and go for a walk. I'm gonna set you up with a, with a longer bipod, Jess, so you can sit on the ground and shoot and have a steady rest. I'm gonna use either sticks or a walking stick or something. And uh, we're gonna take the action to the rodents today. Sounds good. Let's, Let's do it. it. Okay. Oh, this is pretty out here, Jess. This is great. Oh yeah. Oh, man, oh, this looks like a great spot here, Jess. Look, we've got this great side hill up here we can work. And I think we set you on maybe that gopher mound right there. <laughs> It'll give you like almost a high seat. You can set up that bipod, give you a good steady rest, and see if we can ambush some of those guys. Oh, there's one running along up there now. Oh, two of them. See them? Oh, boop, boop, boop. oh yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go set you up. Hunting on foot for ground squirrels is a great way to spend the afternoon. Besides your firearm and rounds, wearing a good pair of boots will help you through the terrain, and using a bipod or a monopod walking stick that's also a gun rest will help you keep steady on those longer shots. But halfway up, put your prostrate on that big white, see that white bluff there? Yeah. Just over? It's right on there, take it there. All right. Oh yes, great shot. There we go, okay. Great shot, great shot. All right, well, I think I'm gonna get my shooting sticks out and show you how it really works, okay? <laughs> you wish, let's... <laughs> Take this one, right? first talked about coming out here I knew this would be a bunch of fun but I had no idea it would be this much fun. Well I know how much fun I've had and I can imagine that you know I've been doing it for years and it's still fun so anytime you want to come back. Well we will be back for sure and young Jessica did okay this week. Very good. She's our first girl hunter out here and uh, she's done very well. 
done some fantastic shots. And how did you enjoy this? Oh, it was unbelievable. I can't wait to get back and tell my friends what a wicked time I had. <laughs> well, just a great summer vacation, and you learned a lot about distance shooting and windage, and you can apply this to all your hunting life. So it's been great. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back. Absolutely. Thank you for having us, Warren. Thank you for coming. Sweetheart, thanks for hunting with us. <laughs> Always great having you with me, <laughs> Anytime, darling. Daddy. <laughs> terrific. I'm your host, Thomas Pigeon from Canada Rough. It's been great hunting with you. Let's do this again real soon. Until the next time, enjoy the greatness of Canada and be proud of your hunting heritage. Canada in the Rough has been brought to you today by Dodge, grab life by the horns. Rocky, outdoor gear. The Beretta family of firearms. Federal premium ammunition, every shot counts. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Yamaha, ATVs and outboards. And Pioneer Log Homes of BC, the finest log homes on earth. For more information on today's episode of Canada in the Rough, log on to canadaintherough.com. Learn more about the show and past episodes, and catch up with our latest adventures. <laughs>